Hello everyone and welcome back to Ratting Road. Progress on the depot has unfortunately come to a brief halt for the time being while I wait for some other little bits and pieces in the post to arrive. Um, you know, due to the uh, you know coronavirus and the lockdown, things are taking a bit more longer than normal to get here. So I'm just holding sight and sitting back and cr cracking on with other things in the you know in the meantime. And one of them things is I'll be weathering some of my container wagon fleet. Um, and I personally do believe that these are a really good starting point and entry level for beginners when it comes to weathering. Um, I'm certainly still a beginner myself, so um, I do, but then I also do feel confident just to show how to weather these. Um, they really are nice and simple to do, and to be honest, they're quite difficult to get wrong. But, um, you know, I'll just be showing you how I do my other wagons as well, or how I've done my other wagons. So I'm going to get straight on with it, and I hope you enjoy it. So what we've got in front of us now is one of my DAPO FEB, FEAB uh, twin spine wagons or you know one of the twins and um, this was the my first attempt at weathering the wagon and I obviously worked off the real pictures as well and uh, I did I am really happy with how it how it came out as a first attempt so the container wagons they all more or less look the same and they you know they didn't stay in their ex works condition for long and you know sooner or later they got absolutely caked in you know just grime and all sorts to the point where they more they more or less turned completely brown but it's important to remember that not everywhere on the wagon is covered in the brown color so what i'm going to do now is just just come up and show up close the areas where i took the weathering paint off so looking at the wagon from the side we'll start taking a look at the areas that uh, Freightliner and all the other companies keep clean and um, starting on the left hand side you've got your overhead warning flash just here then you've got some other decals like that there and there's one there too um, I don't know what they're meant to mean and then you've also got one on the right hand side here as well and then you've also got the ends there as well I don't know if you can see on the camera very well but they they're kept clean as well and then you've also got your Freightliner logo that still doesn't get you know that still stays exposed and then over here you've got your wagon data panels there and around there from pictures they were still still exposed I'll obviously put pictures up in a, in a minute and then you've also got the other decals there and then the overhead warning flash there as well so, um, and it is pretty much the same on the other side when it comes to the decals, so it does look the same on the other side as well. And if I just move the camera over to the left a little bit, this bit at the back, that stays yellow as well, whatever that is. I don't know if it's a guard for something, but they're pretty much the things that need to be removed. And I'll do that by going over with a cotton bud with some thinners. But I'm just going to now go over to the Hatton's wagon and get started on that and then you'll see in proper, you know, full detail how it's done. So I've prepared the area for airbrushing and I've taken off the wheels and I'll just be leaving them to one side. Um, and as you can see, I've just got the chassis or the, you know, the wagon body itself. Um, you can take out the couplings if you wanted to, but I tend to keep them in. So I'm just going to say now, please excuse the the, um, you know, the improper workplace because um, I'm using acrylic paints and I tend to only use acrylic paints for the time being. I don't have to worry as much about, um, you know, like fumes and things like that. Um, you know, so wear a mask if you're wearing, you know, if you're using any like enamel paints, etc. I've got my shed door and windows open to help with ventilation anyhow. So I've got four paints here that I be, I'll um, be using or, well, I'll only be using two of them, but I'll just give you an example. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, the main colour you'll be needing to use is a, you know, a dark brown sort of colour. So the colours here are frame dirt, uh, what one's that, sleeper grime, and then we've got track dirt there. And then the one at the back is roof dirt. So it's pretty much your standard, like, track weathering colours, if you like. But uh, I'm going to be using the... Uh, what was it, the frame dirt and the roof dirt at the back here. So I'm going to just put these to one side. As I said, it's the grand scheme of things, you know, just a main dark brown will do. And then I've got, you know, the roof dirt just to add a bit of tones in there because uh, it's not brown or it's not, it's not the same colour all over. 
And then I've also got a couple of thinners. So on the left, I've got Humbrol thinners for acrylics. And I've also got this one, which I don't, I'm not actually sure what sort of paint it's specified for. I think it does all of them, to be honest. Um, I use this to take off the paint afterwards because the Humbro, um, it isn't that great, to be honest. I mainly just use that just to thin down the paint for the airbrush. But I'm just going to get started on it now and you'll see. So um, you can just about see there and there. I mean, I can't really, I mean, that, that's a bit better, actually. So you can see there roughly where my paint is. And generally, you want the consistency of milk when it comes to, you know, the ratio between thinners and paint. So uh, I'm pretty much happy with that. So I'm just going to test it on the paper first just to see how it comes out. Seems alright to me, so now I'm just going to uh, start applying the paint on the wagon. Tend to, to be honest, one layer tends to be enough. Um, and also, before I get any further, if, if it is your first time, then I would recommend putting a layer of matte varnish on first because what that will do is it will allow you to um, easily wipe off the weathering um, you know, once you've done it and if you're not happy with it. But to be honest, like I said, it is quite difficult to get these wrong. So, um, you know, you should be okay. But I'm just going to uh, get started on it now. So once you've done the surface of the wagon, you can then, uh, you know, start to go around all the sides. So that's what I'm going to do now. And you'll just want to flip the wagon over and just spray it all over the bottom as well and then just get all you know around in the corners as well just for places that are underneath that you would have missed. And once you've, while you've still got your brown in your airbrush, you might as well just go over the, with the bogies with your airbrush as well, just to grind them up. So once you've done all the main browns, I'm now just going to uh, go over it with the roof dirt and just tone it all down in the center. As I said before, it's not, uh, you know, it's not all the same brown, it's not all the same color. I'll put a couple of pictures on screen now so you can see that, you know, the sort of colors that you want to go for. These pictures are off the Hatton's website from their uh, FEA single wagon, um, you know, pro uh, product page or whatever it's called. So uh, credit goes to Hatton's for the pictures, but you get an idea on the, what you can see. So I'm going to now uh, just apply the roof dirt. So now it's time just to go over the wagon with the thinners and uh, just uncover all of the decals and the main, you know, all the main pieces that need to be uncovered. So I'm going to be using my um, McConnor thinner there. And then I've also got uh, just a fine paintbrush as well, just to, uh, you know, just to, 
just big enough to so get at the main areas. You can also use a cotton bud or you know just anything you like really. I, I think a paintbrush is personally better. So it's just a matter of dipping the brush in the thinner and then obviously I don't have too much on there and then you just want to uh, just come over and just dab it on there and then you should see it start to wipe off like so. The good thing about this thinner compared to the Humbrol one is you don't have to put in nearly half as much effort ever so slight you can see it's uh, coming off now almost there I mean obviously the finer paintbrush you have to hand the better but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that so that get an idea now so you just gotta come all the way along as well and all around the wagon to do the same thing. Um, I won't obviously film it all because uh, it will take forever. I'll just show like little odds and ends. So here's the wagon now back on the lao with its bogies back on and uh, as you can see it's all nice and exposed now, all the decals are nice and exposed and I'm happy with how they're looking. Uh, obviously when it comes to the wheels you can clean them if you want to, um, I'll, I'll probably will go over it um, with some thinners after the video is finished. So the next stages for these now would be to matte varnish them to seal everything in and give everything a bit of protection. But I haven't actually got any matte varnish on me at the minute. Um, I've ran out or, and I threw the last lot out because uh, it was the Humbrol stuff and it just it wasn't good at all. So I'm going to be moving on to a different brand. So uh, once I've got some more matte varnish, which should be uh, some point soon, then I can spray over what I've done and just so it's protected. So you probably noticed that when I can come to do the when I came to do the Freightliner logo and the data panels, which are like these little things here, it's like, like there, and then one there as well, and all around. I swapped to the Humble thinners because I made a classic mistake and the, the other thinner was a bit too harsh. And what happened is on the other wagon, it damaged the transfer. 
so if I just come over here, I did spray over it just to cover it up, but um, obviously you can see that there is no uh, Freight Nala logo there and that is because it perished because of the thinner. Um, so all I'll say is please be careful with what you use. Um, I've paid the price so you don't have to. Um, you can stick to uh, you know the humble thinner. But it's also important to bear in mind it all depends on what paints you use. It, you know, no paints are the same. Um, I've just used what I've always used really. It's just a bit strange that when I've done the same method to the dapper wagon up here, I had no problems at all, which suggests that, you know, it's all different transfers that have been used. So uh, yeah, please do watch out and be careful. Do your research. Don't just go on what I'm saying. I'm just doing what worked for me. But uh, yeah, just as long as you do your research, find out what paints are, you know, you want to use and etc. and the thinners, and then you'll be okay. The dapper wagon though was matte varnished on the t when I'd done it. And uh, what I did is I um, just done a little test with some uh, dark weathering washes. And that is just to add the streaks along the center. You can see the ones closest in shot are certainly stand out a bit too much. Uh, they were the first ones I'd done and I wasn't really happy with those. And then the ones at the back are a lot more better. They're a lot more blended in. And that's because uh, when I um, applied the wash onto the wagon, I smudged it with my finger, with my finger just to spread it out a little bit. So you can argue that it does look a lot better. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, when I say the streaks, I'm going to pop up the picture from earlier of the Hatton, from the Hatton's website. And it's the little streaks that go like across the wagon and you know, where the containers sit. Uh, I don't know what those are. I don't know if they're just like grease streaks or just, you know, marks from when the containers have been lowered onto the wagons, but that's all that is. And I thought that would be a nice touch. So once I've applied the varnish to these wagons, then I'll do the same to these just to add a bit more detail and interest to them. So there we go. That more or less brings the video to an end and I hope you enjoyed watching it and I hope you learned a few things, got some inspiration, some ideas and you know, if you're a beginner yourself like I am still, I'm not at all a professional and there's definitely some people out there that have been able to do a better job than what I have and uh, obviously comparing it to the likes of Locos and stuff, it isn't impressive either by any means and I 100% appreciate that and agree with those who are probably thinking it. But yeah, if you are in the sort of same skills set as me and uh, you know a bit of a beginner still and a newbie, then these are a great starting point and uh, I hope you can you know sort of see the effect and hopefully you can see what you can achieve if you put your mind to it and just give it a go. Weathering is seriously addictive and I did have to hold back a little bit and when, I, when I've done these, because I did get the absolute urge to go near some of my locos with an airbrush just to try my hand. But, you know, I calmed down a little bit and stopped myself to potentially ruin it because I'm not really that com confident yet and aren't really prepared to do go to that sort of level. But do your research, like I said earlier on. Double, you know, find different methods and different types of paints that you use. You know, you've got enamels and different types. It's not just acrylics. I've just done what I'm comfortable doing at the end of the day. And that's all, that's the only advice I could give to those who are trying out as well. Just go, you know, like I said, do your research and just find what you think would be best for you and just try it out. So yeah, that more or less brings at the end to the, an end to the video. And I hope you enjoyed watching it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care guys, happy modeling and stay safe. Bye.